Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my first English video ever. If you're new here, my name is Sofia, I'm from Rocco, I live in Germany and I do videos talking about books and reading and traveling and going around and rumbling and you know, all things I find great and worth sharing. In today's video, I want to talk about a book I recently read and it's a book that I want to recommend because it's definitely a read I want to recommend if you want to know more about my ideas, my thoughts, my, my perspectives about this read, just keep on watching. So the book I'm talking about is The Prophet by um, Khalil Gibran. Um, this is a book that is really really loved by many people worldwide. Um, and particularly also the author is really really loved in the Arab world because he's Arab and it's a pretty amazing uh, poet because he's the third most sold poet after Shakespeare and a Chinese um, poet that I completely forget the name of. Um, it's okay. Um, we love this author and chances are if you are in a intellectual or just an Arab household um, where the people actually love reading and enjoy literature, chances are that you're gonna find a copy of any of his books and chances are that you're gonna find a copy of The Prophet. Funny enough, um, The Prophet is a book that he wrote in English. Um, it is one of his rare English books, I mean, not so rare, but he writes in Arabic and in English and this one is definitely his most popular work and definitely the most popular work in English. Um, before starting, I feel that it's important to have some context and I really want to put the, this um, piece into context by talking a little bit about the author. Uh, okay, so he is Arab, he is Lebanese. Um, it, properly saying, he is born in Mount Lebanon, which which is Lebanon today, but that was not Lebanon before. It was Ottoman Empire altogether, and so Mount Lebanon was Lebanon t that we know today. So. And he's born into a Moronic Catholic family. Uh, so he is born a Christian. That's of interest because his literature works are uh, inspired by a couple of religions, and he was also very, very very, very, very inspired by the Muslim culture and religion um, and spe especially the mystic path of Islam, which is the Sufism. Um, he was really inspired by the Sufis and uh, their mystic devotion, the spiritual love and also by the Baha'i faith. Um, so those are a couple of faiths that were of particular interest to the author and many of um, his works and his philosophical uh, prose um, explore topics uh, from these religious perspectives. Uh, both of, all of them brought, up, brought together, but particularly Christianity and Islam because he was born in a geographic location where both these religions were actually um, dominant in a way and where both these religions are sharing the same culture. So you have two religions sharing the same culture, Christianity and Islam sharing one single Arab culture. That was really interesting because we can find this uh, cultural ambiguity of the author in his um, works. But okay, I'm not gonna go too far rumbling. Um, so this sets the context for the for this book, The Prophet. Now, um, what is this book about? What is it first? So first of all, it is a uh, philosophical prose poetry. It is written in prose, just like a normal text, but it is poetry. And the thoughts and the ideas are philosophical. Okay, I hate this jacket. Really, I don't like it at all. It's so much prettier like this. So much nicer. So, the book is about a prophet. Uh, and Mustafa, even if it is not, uh, the name is not actually uh, mentioned in the book. I did some research afterwards and this is where I knew it. And he is visiting, he has spent 12 years among these people of Ophalisi. It's a place, it's a people in a city. And he is leaving and in the moment uh, of his departure, um, he addresses the people of the city and he shares with them 
ideas and thoughts about a couple of topics. Um, so the book is designed as follows. So, um, so the introduction sets the context, who he is, where he is, who is he talking to, who are these people and who are these people and why is he saying what he is saying. And then the rest is oops. Um, it's this list of contents and he starts talking about um, different topics and the, chap the chapters or the pieces are called okay, on love, on marriage, on children, on giving, on eating and drinking, on work, on joy and sorrow, ho on houses, on clothes, on buying and selling, on crime and punishment, on laws, on freedom, on reason and passion, on pain, on self-knowledge, on teaching, on friendship, on talking, on time and many more. So these are all topics that he's going to cover and this is what gives these um, single poetry pieces and each of them is discussing one of these topics. So I think that this is all you need to know about the actual synopsis, if we want, of the book. Now um, let's move on to the writing maybe. As I said, it's a prose poetry, a philosophical poetry, a prose, um, but the writing is a uh, kind of ancient old English. Uh, it's not the English we know today. It's not the English uh, we see in books today. It is a different kind of English and it is a challenging English. So just it's the kind of book that you read with a dictionary or Google Translate or whatever because some of the words, some of the vocab is actually um, a bit, it's not common things, it's not common things we say and it's not common things we we, we use. And also the sentence structure is a bit tricky because it's old structuring. So sometimes um, the positioning of the subject of a sentence are different. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend the beginners in English to read it in English, but the good part is that it's been translated um, um, I think it was translated to more than 40 languages, so you guys are fine, you can even find it in French, in Arabic, in Spanish, in every single language, basically. Um, and yeah, so the, 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 the actual <laughs> language is hard. The writing is really interesting, because the poetry is not very clear, but you feel it as you read. It is poetic without being too poetic. And I feel that this entire book is a metaphor, so of course it has tons of metaphors and these are things I actually like to have in a book. Um, but now I want to actually talk about what I think of this book and I... This book took me so long to read. It is only 97 pages and it took me almost one month to read. It took me around 23 days for 97 pages um, and I've been reading every day. It's because um, the reading of this book is different from reading other books. After reading it, I've come to realize that it is not really about the reading. The, the, the main thing you do when you're reading this book is actually not reading the book, but it's more meditating on the words that you read. So the first action is obviously reading, but it's more of absorbing the words and then do some work of thinking, structuring, understanding the vocab, and then you understand the language. So after you read and you grasp the words and the meaning and you know the language meaning, then you start on the meditation part. And this part is actually the entire experience. Now don't get me wrong, you do meditate while reading a lot of books. But for example, when you read a novel, you're really focused and completely wrapped in the events, actions, characters, and so you meditate at some point when some things happen. But when you read generally poetry or sometimes essays or sometimes philosophical essays, you tend to meditate more because it's just a bunch of ideas that come together and there's nothing else happening but this idea. The beauty really of reading this book is kind of a weird process. 
once you read, then you absorb the words, then you understand the language, then you meditate on your thoughts, and then you relate them to your own experience. And the moment you do that, that's when you can fully enjoy the beauty of the poetry. So the thing is that it is poetry and it's beautiful, but you can't just see it as beautiful from the from the very beginning. You need to go through this process and this process takes so much time. To me at least it took so much time. I, I couldn't just like read a part a part and just move on and be like, okay, I, I got it, now move on. No, I really read it, absorb it, think about it, meditate about it. Like first of all I have to <laughs> I had to understand the language and then you know, meditate on it and then relate it to me and to my own values and my own perspective, like per perceptions of life and of things he talks about and then fully grasp the beauty in his words and that process is a long process and that's a process that you don't really encounter in everyday literary experiences and so that was really what I loved most about this book. Now if we really move to the content, I feel that if I sit here and I really talk about the details of the content, it's gonna be super long and it's gonna be like an essay or like a scientific journal kind of um, description. And but I want to talk about some topics that really had a big impression on me. Um, first of all, I really loved the entire mysticism vibe in the book and the fact that this prophet is actually leaving, so it's an act of moving, of not staying still in the same place, but of going around and moving from one, one land to another, from one world to another, we don't know where he's going, so there's movement and I love that it contrasts with the idea of staying in the same place, doing the same thing throughout an entire life, I love that. I love the way he conveyed the idea that it's through this movement and through him going to different places, leaving and coming back, that he comes back wiser with a broader um, spectrum of thoughts that he comes back with more love to share because we don't know where he goes but he moves and the mystery around the movement is also a very very nice metaphor um, so there is this idea of movement, of being a mystic, of going and not staying still um, there is also the idea of being alone as opposed to being lonely even though they count they kind of overlap together um, but this idea of being alone of going alone of discovering alone of sitting on top of a hill and looking at the fields and the meadows alone of enjoying the earth alone um, as in enjoying the soil you sit on, enjoying the movement and the breeze of the trees. And these are all things he talks about alone. This idea of discovering and grasping the meaning of everything around you alone. I really love that because I, I always really love <laughs> ideas about self, um, con like being content with yourself self-value and self-love, of course. <coughs> Oops! <laughs> um, Self-enjoyment, enjoying things and enjoying life alone. This is very important before you move on and you actually build meaningful connections. Um, which he also talks about, the connections to the people. He, I loved his part on marriage, for example. Um, how you have to be together but not too close to each other, it was amazing. I also loved the outlook he has on the physical um, environment um, as in the um, natural environment, meaning, you know, trees, fields, mountains, lakes, rivers, 
it just takes you back to the basics of all the natural resources and it's really resonated with me right now because this is what I'm studying I'm studying sustainable resources management now and I'm really I feel that I'm connecting back with the resources more than with nature. I'm really understanding scientifically this concept of a natural resource because we have been taken away from all of these things in our modern world. And we have the resources, we have the wood, we have the oil, but we don't really know what they were, what they represent. And so I'm just connecting back with all of these things. And I also have been more outdoor, my program forced me to be in the forest, outside, interacting with the earth, with Mother Earth and its elements. Um, so this also resonated with me. Um, also he spoke about religion and I love the, no, the re religious neutrality in the book because we don't know what these people are, what is their religion, even though there is a chapter on, in, on religion. But it's all about spiritual beliefs and spiritual practice and spiritual love of God. But there is absolutely no mention of whether these people are Christian or Muslim or Jews or another completely different um, faith. It's just neutral and it just shows you really where the truthfulness of a religion lies. And it's just neutral so everyone can take it and maybe try to um, relate it to their own fate and it's really short, the chapter on religion is really short and it really says so much that it just says so much that this is something too personal and it doesn't really take someone standing and telling you about it because at the end of the day it's between you and your creator. I loved everything he's talking about, it is very very reconnecting this book is really very reconnecting with so many things as i said for me it was reconnected with nature reconnecting with my own mind reconnecting with my mind in the sense of it was this meditation exercise i try meditating every day for at least five minutes and when i was reading this book i wasn't meditating because i thought, I, I really believed that it was my meditation activity of the day so i was just doing that and it was enough for me um, and it's reconnecting with the bounds and the, and the relationship you have with people. So when it talks, for example, about family, you really, really take a moment to appreciate your family. And when it talks about love, you really take a moment to appreciate the relationship you have built with your partner. Um, when it talks about friendship, I love the chapter about friendship because it really, really... Uh, it spoke to me and the ideas presented there really matches my own beliefs in what friendship is and should be and what it is for me. So it really reconnects you with also the social relationships you have in your life. It is very grounding also. It grounds you back to where you are and it forces you to be in your environment and reflect on everything that is happening around you but in a more meditative state of mind and it just makes you feel so at ease and at peace. It gives you the opportunity to appreciate where you are and what you're doing. It is very, very spiritual and very, very peaceful. It is a peaceful peace and it is a strong peace and it is an individual peace and I strongly advise you guys to pick it up and read it and see how the experience is going to be with you and how how it's gonna speak to you. I'm sure it's going to be different but it's not gonna be any less beautiful and meaningful. That's it guys, that was my um, my thoughts on The Prophet by this great guy, great author. I definitely want to discover more of his books. I don't think I will be able to read his Arabic books because I'm struggling to understand something he wrote in a second language so probably I will have a hard time understanding something he wrote in his native language which is Arabic which is also my native language but it's a different kind of Arabic and it's a different experience I have with Arabic and my native Arabic is a different kind of Arabic because I speak Darija not the actual classical Arabic which probably has nothing to do with what this guy is going to be writing so it, I just loved his writing style I, I just love this book I'm just gonna talk about this book right now um, so those are those were my thoughts. Share with us, guys, what you think about it if you've read it. 
Um, let me know if you want to see more English videos. Don't forget to follow me on Goodreads. I will leave my Goodreads account somewhere here and on Instagram to stay updated on things I share about books and about what I want to publish on YouTube so that you can also give your input. Thank you so much guys for watching and for sticking around and I will see you in my next video. Tschüss!